thought I'd have a go at demonstrating my new favourite portrait technique, which is painting upside down. So the colours I've got are a bit of Queen Gold. This is light red. That is a Shin Han. I've got a bit of Poppy Red, which is a orange. I've got some Manganese Violet, which is also called Mineral Violet. Bit of Payne's Grey and Prussian blue. I think that's Prussian blue. So that's my colour palette. I've sketched this cowboy. Shall I show you the right way up? So I've sketched this guy upside down. If you haven't seen the video where I was sketching upside down, do have a look at that. So I recommend that you use an identical size piece of paper to start with. And actually this is slightly wider. So there is a danger that I will end up making him slightly wider because what we look when we draw is look at the negative space around him and then follow the patterns in but say I'll put a link to that video now this guy has got some wonderful highlights so I might even put those in just to make sure that I keep them we've got a lot of highlights and shadows on the hat. I've got a highlight over here. This side of his beard is all highlighted, whereas this side is in shadow. So I'm going to start, I'm using a size 10 round, and I'm going to start with some Queen Gold and just sort of wash that over a lot of it except where I can see white so leave some little white areas in that eyebrow and I'm just following the pattern that I can see got a piece of tissue so that I can manage the the water on my brush if I need to and here I'm just going to drop in a bit of that sort of red, poppy red, just so it can transition nice and gently. That's actually quite a stark highlight there. Softer here, so using that damp brush just to soften off those edges. His eyes are all in darkness, except for there is a nice little glint there. Maybe a tiny glint here, so I can go right over there. And again, follow down, look at that wonderful curve there. I'm looking for opportunities to link shapes, if, if at all possible. It's a lot pinker over this side. So I will be putting in a little bit of that violet just to sort of cool it all down. The beard is actually blue over this side so we could just put in a little hoping that it doesn't go green it's just sort of an underwash linking shapes of color in that beard the joy of working upside down like this is that we just see the shapes and shouldn't get sort of caught up in thinking, oh, I'm painting an eye, I'm painting a beard, I'm painting a mouth. We're just looking at those shapes. We can tighten all this up as and when we need to. Let's carry on more up into his hat. Right, I'm picking up some of that light red. Now this is very wet. I want that lovely ruddy look there. I'm going to mix some light red with some of the mineral violet. And that will make a great shadow colour. This is all very, very shadowed. So in fact, I'll probably go over a lot of this now and then end up doing a 
a second wash and make it even darker. I've speeded this up to four times the actual speed because I'm quite a slow painter. So all this is pretty wet at the moment so I'm dropping in darker colours especially that shadow mix of the manganese violet and the light red and I'm letting them merge nice and gently on, on the paper so that I get all sorts of interesting mixes. If it's too dark I just use my damp brush to suck away some of that fluid and lighten things up. Here I'm sorting out his neck and just putting a little bit of shadow and I'm working my way round the face so that no one area becomes particularly finished but that it all gets developed to roughly the same level of finish at the same time. The trouble is if you do say the eye to perfection you might suddenly realise that you don't want that level of detail everywhere and everything gets terribly out of balance. So I think it's generally a good idea to, to dot yourself around the, the, the face and the clothes and uh, all the whole picture to make sure that we really keep things in balance. Of course, if anything's getting too wet, either I'm going to go and work on another area or if I could just use the hairdryer and make sure that nothing is too wet but on the whole I want this all to be quite soft except for those highlights where I've definitely left the sharp areas and again the hat I'm not trying to get a huge amount of detail because it's just not an important part of it I'm realizing here that the shadows really are dark so I'm going in with that manganese violet uh, in its pure form it's such a pretty color and really trying to make sure that I'm not frightened of those shadows. Often in a portrait the, the shadow around the mouth line is one of the strongest so don't need to be surprised by that. The shirt again isn't terribly important but you just want to make sure it looks like he's actually wearing something and therefore I'm just putting in a few of the shadows under the collar, a few creases, you know a tiny bit of detail like that button on the the collar say it's not important and we don't really need to, to be too worried about it I notice I'm using a very small brush here really I should be using something like my size 10 so that I'm not going to get caught up in detail and I could get plenty of fluid on that brush looks to be about a size 6 so I've obviously decided that uh, it was a bit wet and I've just given a quick blast with the, the hairdryer so that I can now start to crisp things up and add in the next layer without everything turning muddy. I've mixed up a dark with some of that manganese violet, a bit of Payne's grey and that light red and now I'm going into the real dark areas so round the nostril, just under that cheek, going under the moustache, places like that where I can really see dark areas and this is usually a great you know real fun part of the the process because it just starts to bring everything to life but because I'm working upside down I'm not getting that same sort of buzz of thinking ah there is an eye. Um, again I'm just trying to follow patterns and really observing by looking at the, the the reference and squinting my eyes and saying where are the darks and I'm following absolutely what I see not what my head is trying to tell me like oh I don't know you know oh a mouth's dark well is it or isn't it here it forces me to really look and that's the joy of this process I'm using that size 6 brush with the, the, the good point um, and that is appropriate now that I'm starting to put some detail in say before I really should have been using something a bit bigger. If needs be I'm going to strengthen some of the colours so I thought that the yellow down the side needed to be a bit stronger. I'm looking at where the shadows are and just trying to keep everything in balance. And with shadows, it's lovely to put colour in the shadows. You know, shadows are not black by any means. Photos do tend to, to strip out the colour. 
So to go back and reinvent colour and make the shadows interesting is part of the, the art of being an artist. Now for the fun bit, which of course is the hair and the beard. And again, I'm just using that little brush and I am going to alter the colour. I'm not just going to go in with grey and black because actually if you look at that beard, it's got all sorts going on in it. It's got purple, it's got blue, it's got some, oh, I don't know, skin colour, tan colour. There's all sorts going on. And where it is in the light, that's where you can't really see much detail because it's sort of bleached out. So I'm making sure that the, the strongest marks are actually in the sh shadow side and leaving it all a bit more diffused over on the, the light side. To capture his white hair, which is very short on the light side, I'm painting behind it. We call this negative painting. So by painting a background, you actually imply what's going on. Same on the light side of the hat here. By painting the background, I'm capturing the light on the hat. I'm aiming to get that background as varied as possible. So while it's wet, I'm dropping in different shades of green and blue just to imply that something is going on. I don't need to paint, I think it's a tree, but you know, whatever's behind him. I just need something that will help show up those, those white edges. And at this point, it's all a matter of just refining things and looking, really observing, seeing where there are lights and darks that I haven't caught and whether I need to balance anything up. Being in control of the water on your paper is one of the key watercolour skills. If it gets too wet, then everything's out of control. If it's too dry, then you don't get those beautiful marks. So here I'm drying everything off. I think we're about ready to turn him round, but I think if I really give him a good dry, I'll be able to rub out any pencil lines that are still showing through. And um, then we can do the big reveal. So here I am rubbing those out. Do make sure your paper's dry because otherwise you're just going to scuff it. And at this point, I suddenly realise as I'm doing all this rubbing out that I've missed out the, the big shadow across his shoulder. So I better go and put that in. All it is is going to be a patch of darker blue, but it is important because that strong light is what attracted us in the first place. So now we can turn it the right way up and see what on earth we've been painting all this time. And I'm quite pleasantly surprised. I mean, it looks like a human, so that's always a, a good thing. So just because you paint it upside down doesn't mean you can have to stop at this point. Of course, we can keep on refining things because, again, our right side up brain is um, seeing this with fresh eyes because it hasn't been seeing it up to this point. So it's a case of darkening, lightening, warming things up, cooling things down and really all the time just desperately trying not to overwork it. Because again, with watercolour, once you've lost that freshness, you can't get it back. You really have to be careful not to create mud by going over the same area time and time again as tempting as it is. I think pretty much all that there is left to do is just to make a few more of the darks a little bit punchier and by going darker you make the light look lighter. Again in watercolour you can either make something lighter by lifting it, the danger is that it muddies it up, or you can go dark nearby and that will make the light look lighter. So I'm just darkening a few of the shadows and a few of the lines just to give it a bit more punch. The temptation is to go too far at this point. You could keep going forever putting another wrinkle in here, you know, a little bit on the hat. I'm just trying to imply a bit more of the weave here and bring some of the green of the background into the face and into the clothes. But at this point, you have to be asking every brush stroke, does this add something or doesn't it? And if it doesn't really make a difference, don't put it down on the paper. 
it's one of those skills that we all struggle with you know when do we stop and um, I'm not sure there's an answer just ask yourself constantly do I need to do this should I stop and if you're not sure stop make a cup of tea come back and look at it or put it away for a couple of days put it somewhere where you just catch it out of the corner of your eye while you're around the house and things will soon become pretty clear whether it is finished or not so now I've decided to use a little bit of opaque white here I'm using um, some gouache I would add a little bit of water so that it flows but not so much that it becomes transparent and I'm just adding a few little marks of that beard because I felt that it was a, a little dark a few little highlights on that eyebrow maybe the glint in the eye just to to brighten those up it's important not to go too far when you're using the opaque because it does look different from the original watercolor so again it's a case of less is more and make sure that you don't get carried away it is tempting again just to do a little bit much with the gouache on i just decided that a few areas need a little bit of glazing so i'm using a flat brush to add a very thin layer of color to a few places just to perk things up um, I just want to strengthen the colour. I'm using particularly that Queen Gold because it's lovely and transparent and that can just add a little bit of glow in places. But I'm also just touching up a few of the darks and adding a slightly different mark because most of this has been painted with a round brush. And if you use a flat brush, it does bring a different quality to the piece. So it can be quite fun just to add a little bit of something different the viewer probably won't realize but it just adds a different energy in places so the, all that remains is to take off the tape which we will do carefully so as not to rip at this last point and there we have our upside down cowboy